Get your swim trunks ready. Today we're going to take a dive into Throne of the Tides. Let's go. The first boss of this instance is Lady Najar. And this is a two-phase encounter. During the first phase, she will cast water bolts at random players. You're going to just want to try to interrupt these whenever possible. Lady Najar will also target a player with Shock Blast. This player needs to move out and away from the group. Once this goes off, it will send out Shock Orbs in all directions. Try your best to avoid these. If you do happen to get hit, you'll take a fair bit of damage and you'll be stunned. She will also cast Focus Tempest, which will lash out at players with nature damage and then jump to nearby targets, dealing reduced damage. Healers will just want to be sure they heal up this to keep everyone healthy. Lastly, throughout the entire encounter, geysers will spawn. You want to avoid these since they do deal moderate damage and knock players up into the air. Once this boss hits 60% health, she will enter an intermission known as High Tide. This will spawn a ton of different adds, including Murlocs, an Honor Guard, and two Frost Witches. During this phase, players will want to stay spread out since Murlocs do leap and cleave any nearby targets upon landing. The Frost Witches will cast Bolts and should be interrupted if possible. They also buff themselves with Icy Veins, which increases their haste and frost damage. This can be purged, so may just keep an eye out for that. The Honor Guard will slap the tank and do a frontal cone. Everyone should try to keep an eye on this if they can. Once all of the Eds are defeated, Phase 1 will start again, and the intermission will happen once more at 30% health. Rinse and repeat. Commander Ulthok will start the encounter by casting Bubbling Fissure. This will be casted on DPS and healers. You're going to want to try to bait these near each other, and I'll talk about the reason why shortly. Tanks are going to want to keep an eye out for the Crushing Claw cast. Make sure you use some type of mitigation or defensive here. Every once in a while, Ulthok will cast Festering Shockwave, knocking players back and dealing direct shadow damage and applying a heavy damage over time effect. Healers, you know what to do. Um, <clears throat> panic. The major mechanic of this fight is when Ulthok casts Awaken Ooze. This will animate all of the current pools of Bubbling Ooze, which will spawn adds that fixate players. This will last for 12 seconds, and the only way to deal with this mechanic is by knocking the oozes back with attacks. I recommend to kite the adds underneath or through the boss, allowing the melee and tank to knock them back with, well, melee attacks. It is worth noting that a lot of CCs are ineffective, so focusing on kiting and knocking them away with attacks is the key to this encounter. Starting this encounter, the Mindbender will force Erunok to hit players of your party with Flame Shock, a pretty nasty damage over time effect. Healers, you're gonna want to dispel this immediately. Shortly after, he will spawn a Storm Flurry Totem. This will cause the boss to deal additional nature damage to the tank, which can be lethal in high enough keys. DPS should swap to this immediately, but tanks should drag the boss to the totem to maximize cleave. Lastly, the Earth Fury cast will spawn a sequence of swirls under all players. Be sure to avoid these. Once Uranok hits 25% health, Gursha will detach, attempting to deal with you himself. This phase only has two mechanics. First, Mind Rot will deal ticking damage to your entire party for the rest of the encounter, so healers, buckle down because you need to do some throughput. Lastly, the Terrifying Vision cast will deal lethal damage, but if a player happens to live, they will be feared for 6 seconds. The way to counter this mechanic is by using these pillars to line of sight. This boss dies at 0 per... <laughs> Duh. This fight is going to work a little different than how some of you boomers remember it. In this final encounter, you will be fighting the Ink of Azumat. First, tanks. You're gonna need to stay in melee range for this fight. Blotting Barrage will target three players, which leave behind Blotting Darkness, or I guess Ink on the ground. Range can try to drop this at the edge of the room, while melee could technically just drop it near the boss to maximize damage. Following this, tanks and players will need to be aware of the tank frontal. And tanks, for the love of God, please don't play Russian Roulette. Just stand still and let other players avoid it. Throughout the encounter, Azumat will spawn adds called Splotches and Sludges. Tanks should aim to get threat on these mobs, and DPS should focus on killing them, or cleaving them down. The major healer mechanic here is Putrid Roar, which will deal shadow damage and apply a dot to all players. Now, focusing back on the ink, this can be cleared whenever Neptalon targets two players with Cleansing Flux. Players who are being channeled into should run over pools or ink that are in the way, preferably in melee. While you're also being channeled into, you are immune to shadow damage, so don't worry that you're walking through the gunk on the ground. After juggling all of these mechanics, the Ink of Azumat will be defeated and Neptalon will empower your party, allowing you to swiftly push back Azumat so he retreats back into the depths. And congratulations on completing a dungeon that's over 12 years old. Big shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Without their support, I wouldn't be able to make videos like this. So I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.